We thank you that through suffering he learned obedience and that he became a person others could love while he was with us here on earth. Last week we had news that Dominican participants to the Drug Abuse Resistance Education DARE program in the United States, Police Officer Zeporo Alfred received an award for outstanding performance. Corporal Alfred participated in a two-week extensive training program in New York as part of a two-year project being carried out here and in other OECS countries by partners of the Americas. The project is being funded by the United States Agency for International Development, the USAID, with technical assistance coming from the Flor Florida Volunteers Corps. The DEA program is a specialized police program in the United States where uniformed police officers visit elementary schools to talk to students about drug abuse. It is hoped that the U.S. program can be modified to suit our local situation. Following our program, we will bring you a feature on the DEA program. In its efforts aimed at continuing to provide quality education for Dominican students, the government of Dominica is expanding the Newtown Primary School. The expansion to the school, which began last year, is nearing completion. It will provide for additional classrooms and will ease up congestion in the old building. Because of lack of space, the school was operating on a shift system, 8 a.m. to 12 noon and 12.30 to 4.30 p.m. Happenings has been informed that on completion of the new section, the school will return to normal primary school hours of 9 to 12 and 1.30 to 3.30 p.m. When the extension is completed, it will have cost over $300,000. Hey, you want some jobs? I don't think so. Take some of those. No. It will make you cook. I said no. <laughs> This message was brought to you by the Ministry of Education's Drug Education Unit in association with Partners Against Drugs. A good idea that works. Welcome to the wonderful world of shopping at the new Shoppers Discount Supercenter located in the heart of Roseau on Cross Lane. Shoppers Discount is a modern shopping convenience with a wide variety of products designed to make your shopping a lot easier. Prices are marked down to help your hard-earned dollars stretch a little further. Next time you shop, come to Shoppers Discount Supercenter on Cross Lane. The savings are fantastic. From the chief manufacturers of quality cottages and comfortable houses in Dominica comes the most affordable and durable prefab houses. Built from the most intelligent designs, top quality materials with excellence in craftsmanship. Roomy, spacious, comfortable. All cottages and houses come fully loaded. Choose your designs and call Superwood Products with house experts. For the best in gift items for weddings, birthdays, and other occasions, come to Richley Trading at number 54 Old Street in Roseau. There, you'll find a variety of household appliances like blenders, radios, electric irons, and much more. In the upstairs department, there's clothing and shoes for children, ladies, and gents. Come to Richley Trading at number 54 Old Street in Roseau and save. Topping all stories for the week, bananas high on the agenda of a meeting attended by Trade Minister Charles Maynard. Over 70 young persons graduate from a youth skills training program, and the ruling Dominica Freedom Party holds a rally today. I am Christiana Abraham. Do have a good day. to a prominent position with HUD. Atchenberg, who fought to remove the funding for the Boy Scouts of America in San Francisco because the Boy Scouts would not accept homosexual Boy Scout leaders. So she made sure she cut their money off and the president made her the, assist, the second in command at HUD. The Bible says there's a generation that calls evil good and good evil, and that's this generation. On April the 24th, upwards of 300,000 homosexuals 
and lesbian activists marched in Washington, D.C. The Washington Post carried this account the next morning, quote, Last night, as thousands of hand-clapping, war-hooping lesbians erupted out of DuPont Circle and headed down Connecticut Ave Ave Avenue chanting, We're dykes and we're out for power. Chants that grew into a steady roar as the marchers funneled through the 17th Street Canyon and swung left on Pennsylvania Avenue toward the brightly lit White House. There came one of those wonderful defining moments that will remain forever etched upon the heart and memory of the city. Lauren Smith, an elementary school teacher from Seattle, climbed atop the 15-foot bronze statue, threw off her shirt, and began a jubilant, bare-breasted, hip-thrusting victory dance in place, and the crowd went wild, end quote. This is America, and this is an America that's forgetting God. On April the 26th, Surgeon General Jocelyn Elders was quoted in the National Review saying, quote, I will tell every girl when she goes out on a date, put a condom in your purse. This is the Jocelyn Elders that said, we taught them what to do in the front seat, let's show them what to do in the back seat. She has since called for the legalization of drugs. The principle of sustainable utilization adopted in Agenda 21 and so on. So one year ago, there was conclusive communication to the Whaling Commission stating that for reasons given in the letter, Dominica could not. One year later, we have a statement from the government saying that it has always. So I think we have to be very careful about that. The other thing we need to look at in, in getting clear as to what the Dominica's position has been, I have in front of me Dominica's voting record for 1992 on the Whaling Commission, Dominica's voting record for 1993 on the Whaling Commission, and Dominica's voting record at the recently concluded 94 session. And there's an amazing, and I'll pass them to you, you may want to look yeah, at it. I want, yeah, I want to look at it, but just some There's an amazing just overlap of Dominica's position with the Japanese. That is the conclusion. And what that seems to say is that Japan has set itself a simple task of making sure that commercial whaling is resumed. And that means blocking the sanctuary. Unfortunately, the nature island of the Caribbean has, from 1992, been displaying a performance at the International Whaling Commission which suggests that it too would want to see commercial whaling resumed by its voting pattern. Now that has not been the stated position of the government of Dominica, but that is what the voting pattern receives. But I want to go further because it seems to me on the scientific data question which keeps coming up, we hear the minister just said again that the government was awaiting more scientific data. What scientific data? The only thing that was debated by Japan at this last meeting was the size of the sanctuary, really, and whether or not the minke whales should be included or excluded from a, a species to be protected within the sanctuary. Those who were proposing the sanctuary agreed to move the sanctuary boundaries to, sh to, to, to make it sh smaller as a compromise to the Japanese. And when the vote was taken, 23 countries voted for, and one country, Japan, voted against the amendment to the to the proposal. All right, let, so, let's go to sorry, sorry, I think let's go to a phone call. Good well, good evening. Yeah, good evening. Yeah, I only have one comment to add to Mr. Martin is that the only thing that has changed since the record of to influence the record of Dominica is the presence of the Japanese in Dominica. And you know we're not foolish. The only thing is that the Japanese are now present here and all of a sudden Dominica is changing its opinion. That's what I'd like to add to Mr. Matthew. Thank you. All right. No, I, I want to make a couple of comments on what Ati has been saying there. First of all, um, 1993, Dominica cannot support the proposal. What is the proposal? The proposal is a French resolution, which has particular boundaries. We are saying we support the concept of a wheeling sanctuary, but we cannot support the proposal. Um, Chile took the same position. Listen to this on the Chile statement. On the contrary, and Chile eventually supported yes, the resolution. Yes. On the contrary, a substantial argument was made on the desirability of another boundary further to the south along the lines of the Antarctic Convergence, which is precisely what Dominico was saying. The adoption of this boundary, as defined in Article 1, Number 4 of the Convention for the Conservation of Antarctic Marine Living Resources, um, Camilla, would make much more sense from an ecological point of view, taking into account that the Southern Ocean ecosystem constitutes mainly the feeding ground of baleen whales. So in other words, 
Chile's position, Dominica's position, in asking for scientific support for a boundary at 40 degrees. But it's, it's, saying, it's saying that it would make much more ecological, much more sense from an ecological point of view to put it at 60 degrees. If you want to move it to 40 degrees, then you must give some scientific evidence to support that. But, Brian, but I think we've gone beyond that. But I agree, but, but so, just let's um, conclude that this the, 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 the sanctuary is now settled, and, and it's settled at a boundary which is a compromise between the 60 and the 40. But Dominica's it's position is not settled, I'll tell you why. If Chile asked for information and seemed to have got it, that would satisfy it, that the, um, the, the, it could now vote for the sanctuary. You My see, question the, the, is, Dom, Chile well, didn't get information did Dominica which satisfied not it. get information? No, no, Chile didn't get information which satisfied it. Chile got a political compromise Whatever. which moved the boundary below yes. Chile's um, territorial Absolutely. area. Absolutely and into the Antarctic Convergence Area. Understandable, because Chile around is, Chile is within the sanctuary. And therefore they voted for it. It wasn't on the basis of a scientific, being satisfied scientifically. <laughs> In other words, they broke their position from the scientific position uh, into a, a national interest position. position. Okay, the difference right, between um, Chile and Dominica, of course, is that we have a real vested interest in making sure that the world knows that we stand unequivocally behind nature and ecotourism. That is again, good Again, my of difficulty nature. with that is that it is so one-dimensional. Now, I'm saying that Dominica needs ecotourism, but I'm saying also that in reality and in fact, Dominica is one of the most outstanding ecosystems and eco-destinations mm -hmm. anywhere in the world. Mm -hmm. um, the fact that Dominica takes a position which may be unpopular with a particular group of ecologists or conservationists that is a whale watching group, um, does not change the fact that in general terms, Dominica is one of the most conservation conscious. It does. It because doesn't change it's not that. just whale watchers who gentlemen, are affected. Gentlemen, we're going to come back to explore that because I think that is perhaps uh, going to be the most uh, interesting dimension to our discussion this evening. The actual, uh, how, how you see the impact of this, of this non-vote uh, at, at, the, at the whaling commission. Uh, we're going to take a break forward from our sponsors, our discussion with Minister Brian Aileen, Hotelier Oliver Surfin, and conservationist Atherton Martin. We'll continue in just a moment. <laughs> After 12 years of growth and expansion, Marvin Television continues to bring the world to your home. From its studios at Mont Daniel, Marvin Television transmits to over 6,500 homes a rich variety of programs for every need. From the learning channel for kindergarten to Mind Extension University for under and postgraduate studies, Marvin Television programming runs 24 hours daily, 7 days per week. Moppin Television will bring the world to your home. Moppin Television is operated by a team of competent professionals that you can bank on for the production of quality advertisements and exquisite footage of our nature island. So whether it's local productions or quality cable TV service, just leave it up to Moppin Television. Telephone 809-448-4107. Batista, inviting you to tune into Marfan Television and Headline News as we cover the world every 30 minutes. You'll receive the top headlines from the United States and around the world, and the most up-to-date sports, business, weather, and entertainment news. Watch Headline News on Marfan Television. Thank <laughs> you. 
Welcome back to What About You. Live with Mapping and Television Studios in Mount Daniel. Just caught me there relaxing. Yes, I have a reclining chair. <laughs> I, was just, uh, I was just listening to the guys here going at the, at the, at the very um, hectic pace during the break. Um, we, we're coming back to our discussion on Dominica's vote uh, regarding the Southern Ocean Whale Sanctuary. Our guest, uh, Minister of External Affairs, Brian Aileen, Hotelier Oliver Serfin, and uh, Hotelier Hopeful, <laughs> After the matter. <laughs> Thought I'd get that in for good measure. All right. How does this question on the line, call on the line? They tell me Wallhouse has been waiting for some time. Come in, please. Good evening. Good evening. Will Mr. Allen agree that it is an unprincipled and in bad taste for his party to attack a non government organization like the Dominica Conservation Association last Friday evening at Lubeck simply because of its stand on the whaling issue and it was a stand to protect the ecotourism of Dominica and of course the Dominica Conservation Association is a prestigious organization that government must consult in any bid to get international financing and it was on principle to say that the Dominica Conservation Association is a useless body of people who are driving cars. I heard it myself. All right, Paula, let, let me give Mr. Allen a chance to respond to that. I, Thank well, you. I don't know. I didn't hear it. If, if it was said, I think it's an unfortunate statement because I, I don't think one should categorize people as uh, this or that or the other because they take a position different from yours. I think... Um, uh, my party and my government upholds the right of people to disagree and to dissent. And I think that's a very basic and fundamental human right. Naturally, there are those whose dissent and disagreement is not based on good faith. And where that is so, one should point it out. Where it is not so, or where one has no good reason to consider it to be so, I think one should give the parties due credit for good faith. And um, I, I personally would not, um, in respect of this particular issue, accuse the, the Conservation Association of bad faith. I think there have been occasions on which they have done less than what they could have done in clearing their own position. But um, I wouldn't go further than that. All right, um, let's take some more phone calls. Goodwill, good evening. Goodwill, good evening. Hello. Go yes, Goodwill, go ahead, please. Good evening, Mr. Linton. Thank you very much for this very interesting pro program, just that you, it came in a bit late after the voting. After the fact. The vote was only Friday, eh? Yeah, but <laughs> we, we wanted that program before okay. the voting. Now, you think like it might have had an influence on the vote? Well, no, but at least the people of Dominica would have had a chance to know what was going on in the outside world, but now okay. it's a bit late. Okay, thank you. Now we would like Hello? Why did you cut off the caller? Hello. Yeah, okay, you're still there. Yes, I'm still there. Yeah, go ahead, please. No, we would like to find out from the Mr. Aline whether the investment that the people of Dominica, the local people, have invested in different forms of tourism, hotels, and whatever, is more is is it more important than the money that the Japanese are putting in the fishing industry? All Thank right. You. Thank you, Paula. I don't think it's one or the other. I don't think the Japanese investment in the fishing industry is dependent on our vote on the... How much is Japan investing in the fishing um, industry? I think it's about six to seven million US dollars. It's not dependent on our vote. That, in the, that, in the, the timetable on, on, on that project? The project has started. It started. And um, the first phase is expected to be completed within about a year or so. Mm. Uh, the, both the, the fisheries project and the investments of people in tourism in Dominica are extremely important. Um, we, we must develop our fisheries in Dominica. It's one of our principal resources, which are very important for our future. On the other hand, tourism, and especially ecotourism, I think is going to be the major um, economic trust of the immediate foreseeable future. And I don't think we should put the one against the other. Uh, what, what, have you, what have you done effectively with the, with the abstention, effectively non-vote? Does that hurt the very same nature island interest that you're trying to build? In fact, the people who were uh, seeking to influence us on the, on the um, sanctuary issue 
were saying to us, at least give us uh, an absent abstention. Um, we would prefer a positive vote in favor of the sanctuary, but we would be happy with an abstention. So I think an abstention should was safe, um, was safe yes. Mm -hmm. But perhaps more importantly, the sanctuary is now declared, and in my view, I think it's no longer an issue. It's, it's an existing fact of life, and we must now begin to look at Dominica as an echo destination mm -hmm. and emphasize that. And, and I hope that the several organizations that spoke about giving us support if we um, did not oppose the sanctuary and, and meaning either that we supported it or that we abstained on it, um, that those organizations will now do what they in fact said they would do, which is to give Dominica not dishonest support, but to bring to the attention of the world the fact and the reality of Dominica's product, which is in fact a unique and very important saleable product, yeah. uh, which could, could be the basis of, of significant economic growth and development for Dominica. Oliver Serafin, how do you see the abstention? I see the abstention as being the better of the two evils. Um, what is very clear is that the representative of government here... The better um, or the lesser? The better the better well, the <laughs> yes, I would say that because, let's put it, we, we, I, 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 I would like to say that we look for positive, okay? Uh -huh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we must find a positive. Okay. And in my view, the world community um, out there are not the pure, um, how would I say, the articulate um, um, efforts of Don Moras only. Mm -hmm. It has to do with a wider umbrella of persons. In fact, the organizations together has a conglomerate um, constituency of over 20 million persons who were, for the largest extent, not involved with the boycott. Mm -hmm. And that is the point that a lot of people must understand. Because at the moment, the World Wildlife Fund, mm -hmm. which in fact the minister made reference to here in his press conference, are persons who are involved, are organizations involved at this time mm -hmm. in the ENCORE project, which is along the West Coast, in particular Scott said, and in the Portsmouth area and for which um, um, our friend Oliver Che, um, Ophelia, Ophelia, Ophelia. Mm. is the coordinator. So there is an active involvement of such organizations in the developmental process of Dominica. Building like the make, nature and position. Exactly. Mm. I would like to make mention of the fact that the Sierra Club, mm. in particular, is an organization where the chairman of that club wrote to the Prime Minister and indicated that as a consequence of what she thought, what they thought, would have been a positive vote from Dominica that that would constitute a desirable objective on their part. My, my, question, is, my question yeah. is, are you dealing with any people in, in the context of all of those organizations who are likely to see the abstention as a betrayal? Yes, I think they would see the abstention not necessarily as a betrayal because the sanctuary was passed, mm -hmm. as it were, but they would see us as having been wishy-washy about what we have in fact promoted all along. And the, the minister is quite correct. They did signal to Dominica that if they can't get a full support for, they would be satisfied with the abstention because the abstention would constitute uh, the opportunity in the voting process for the sanctuary to be passed, and it was in fact passed. Is, does, would that suggest, African Martin, that the, the level of enthusiasm with which uh, these institutions would go ahead with uh, promoting the, the, the nature island product that we're trying to develop here would diminish in some it's sense? It's a little less than it could have been with a yes vote, and hence we have to do some damage control. And this is why I would like to take up the minister here on his, his, his very proactive suggestion that in fact we, that we do something to ensure that these people come, come forward, you know, honor, honor their promises. And, and we have to prepare, we have to take some steps locally to do that. It seems immediately we need the commission to pull together some sort of a commission or grouping that would involve the Chamber of Commerce, the Hotel and Tourism Association, the, 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 the Ministry of Tourism, the Conservation Association, other interested parties to in fact launch, I would say, a fairly aggressive outreach strategy, outreach program to those institutions, including Ted Turner and CNN, and say, hey, look, we're ready, we're here with you, let us sit down and map out the kind of strategy we want to see followed over the next four to five years, and let us put some measurable indicators that would let us know, yes, you have delivered, you are delivering, let's get the, the eco-tourists into Dominica. And this is something that we can do, that we should do, that in fact we must do if we wanted to in fact 
give them no excuse to back down on the commitments in their writing. We have to create the basket into which we're going to collect the promised uh, benefits from their support. And I, I would say we go further than just getting them to send visitors to us. There are several other things the Conservation Association has proposed last year, and I'd like to bring them back. Number one, we propose that Dominica take the initiative of declaring its waters a whaling sanctuary. Although, because we do have what is classified by the World, world um, Dolphin op Operation, an outstanding capacity and potential for whale watching. There are three categories, which is one is just mild, one is fear, and the other one is outstanding. We are classified as an outstanding place. And let us take the bull by the horns, let us declare our waters a whaling sanctuary and encourage our neighbors to do likewise. Remember, we are between France, Martinique and Guadeloupe, as somebody else has said in recent weeks. And so if France has put forward this proposal, let us encourage France to work with Martinique and Guadeloupe to establish an extending sanctuary that hopefully one day could cover the entire Caribbean. Let us also move forward, not just on tourists coming to our country, but establishing a, 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 a whale watching or institute or program, a training program here in Dominica, the nature island of the Caribbean. And let's get the help of these institutions to do that. Let's bring some jobs here, let's bring some profile here, let's develop our scientific capability on the issue. These are three proposals this committee, this joint committee, I, I, I would suggest could in fact focus on over the in, next... In, in terms of strategy, Minister Aline, would the government have any, any difficulty with that? I want to add one, one area, and that is the whole area of wheel watching, which as we all agree is a, an area of tremendous potential in communing. Um, but within the IWC and within the conservation community, there is also an inclination to uh, very strictly control or even prevent whale watching because there is a view of some people that whale watching disturbs the whales. And the IWC will be the forum in the future where strict regulation of whale watching itself will be promoted. So we need to begin to establish a relationship with our whale watching people here. And I've already taken an initiative on that which will enable us to work together to make sure that regulations in whale watching are not so restrictive as to prevent us taking advantage of whale All right, now back to your phone calls. Goodwill, good evening. Thank you very much. I have a specific question or two for Mr. Ali. Go right ahead, please. Also, I want to make a statement. Yes, Dominica has become part of this Whale watching sanctuary in spite of the government's attitude. The first question is, Mr. Ali, when Mr. Maynard told the region that Dominica will be voting for the sanctuary, soon after that, after having he having left Dominica, two unelected people began saying, Frank Barron in the first place, no, 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 we know nothing about that, that is Mr. Tua at all, at all, at all. And then the secretary begins taking the cabinet minister to task, and then the cabinet minister goes out and supports those two people. What sort of cabinet business is that? Then Mr. Aline is called and asked, well, what are your comments? What do you think? Then Mr. Allen replies, when we say no comment, we mean no comment. What sort of mockery of cabinet government, of collective responsibility, that the Eugenia Charles cabinet is making of the people of Dominica? All right, Paula, let, let me get Mr. Allen to respond to that. Thank you. Again, you see, this is a, a, a deliberate distortion of facts. Okay, um, whatever Mr. Maynard said or didn't say, um, I understand that Mr. Barron made a statement. Now, a commissioner, an ambassador, cannot contradict a minister when it comes to a matter of policy. That, that's a matter that a minister should do, the cabinet should do, if it's necessary. No, um, I, didn't, I didn't hear Mr. Barron's before you, statement. Before, no, no, before you go ahead, if that happens, mm -hmm. what does cabinet do? If that happens, then I suppose the person who uh, made the statement must be called to account in what way would depend on the circumstances. And again, I'm saying I didn't hear the statement. I don't know what the statement 
what effect the statement was. But if Mr. Was, Barron right. made the statement, he should be called to account. If he made the statement contradicting the minister, saying the minister had no right to make such a statement or was misinformed, mm -hmm. then I think he should um, uh, be called to account for it, one way or another. Um, the question of my saying no comment, I think if the